greetings from the English Literature YouTube channel. It is a one-stop destination to soothe all your literary curiosities. Welcome back to our literary journey on the English Literature, where every video brings a new literary exploration. Today, in this video, we will read the poem Lotus, written by the Indian English poet Torudat. So before delving deep into the poem, let's unveil the extraordinary journey that shaped Toru's creative spirit. So here we start. Toru Latadat, popularly known as Torudat, was a 19th century Indo-Anglian poet. She was born on 4th March 1856 in Calcutta, British India now known as Kolkata. She was born in a family drenched in literary richness. She was blessed with two cherished siblings, Aru and Abzu. Her father, Govind Chandadat, was a Bengali poet. When Toru was just six years old, in 1862, the family embraced Christianity. But what prompted this profound shift in their lives? So this decision was likely influenced by a combination of social, personal and cultural factors prevalent in 19th century colonial India. It was a time when people were shifting towards Christianity to gain social acceptance and opportunities in British controlled society. Tragedy struck when Toru lost her brother Abzu. At the tender age of 14, deeply aggrieved, the Dutch set sailed to Europe seeking solace and the best of Western education for their gifted daughters. They sailed to France, where Toru and Aru attended a French school at Nice for a few months and studied French. The family spent a year in London, where Toru and Aru studied music and history. In the year 1871, Toru attended Cambridge, where she met Mary E. Martin, with whom she carried on a close friendship, mostly through letters, until her untimely death. In September 1873, the failing health of the two young daughters forced the death to return to Calcutta and the year 1874 marked another blow when Toru lost her constant companion, her sister, Aru, marking a turning point in her life. Toru alone but undeterred turned her attention towards literary pursuits and she produced an impressive collection of prose and poetry over the next three years. Unfortunately, she couldn't remain in this world so long, as if inscripted by destiny on August 30, 1877, like her beloved siblings, Taru's vibrant life met a tragic end, only at the mere age of 21, leaving behind a legacy of prolific creativity. So here we conclude our discussion on Toru's brief but productive and impactful life. Now, let's turn our attention towards the realm of her poetry, Lotus. Love came to Flora, asking for a flower that would of flowers be undisputed queen. So here, the speaker is describing love approaching Flora and asking for a flower. Here love is Cupid, god of love in Roman mythology. And Flora is the goddess of vegetation and flowers. Love is asking for such a flower that would be undisputed queen. This flower should stand out as the most beautiful and significant among all others and no one can question on its status. 
the lily and the rose long long had been rivals for that high honor bards of power in these two lines the speaker introduces two specific flowers the lily and the rose which have a long history of being rivals for the title of the most beautiful flower bards of power refers to the poets who possess the ability to influence and shape opinions through their words the mention of the power suggests that these poets are influential and respected bards of power had sung their claims the rose can never tower like the pale lily with her juno mane according to these lines the influential poets had expressed their opinions that the rose cannot stand straight like the pale lily it means rose cannot achieve the same level of charm as the pale lily which is portrayed with qualities of the goddess juno goddess juno is known for her stately beauty but is the lily lovelier does between flower factions rank the strife in psyche's bower here the poet is questioning whether the lily is more beautiful than the rose this sparked a conflict in the garden between groups of flowers led by the rose and the lily give me a flower delicious as the rose and stately as the lily in her pride but of what color rose red love first chose then prayed no lily white or both provide here flora inquired about the color of the flower cupid initially chose rose red and then lily white ultimately requested to provide both colors and flora gave the lotus rose red dyed and lily white the queenliest flower that blows flora in response created the flower lotus dyed with both rose red and lily white described the queenliest flower so we have completed the line wise explanation of the poem let's move towards the analysis part the poem lotus is a petrarchan sonnet it has 14 lines divided in octave of 8 lines and the sestet of 6 lines with no ending couplet rhyming scheme of the poem is a b b a a b b a c d c d d c as we know the sonnet deals with a single idea where octave presents a problem and the sestet resolves it here in octave main problem of selecting the queenliest flower is shown the two flowers mentioned in the octave have a deep connection with the two goddesses and cultures lily is said to have been created with the breast milk of the virginal roman goddess juno upon the birth of her son mars signifies european beauty while rose is said to have originated as a result of the love making of greek goddess psyche and cupid embodies asian ideals the rose red in color is actually native to asia ancestor flora introduced lotus with the characteristics of both rose and the lily claiming the queenliest flower and hence problem resolves here also it is the national flower of india and by claiming it the undisputed queen the poet glorifies india and it proves the poet's love for her country now let's discuss the themes embedded in this beautiful sonnet so the poem is based on the themes ranging from cultural exploration and aesthetic contemplation to national pride and the synthesis of diverse beauty standards 
So let's explore in deep. So the central theme of the poem Lotus revolves around the exploration of beauty through the symbolic representation of flower. The poem explores cultural duality between the West and the East, symbolized by the lily and the rose. Lily is associated with Roman mythology, signifies European beauty, and rose originating from Greek mythology embodies Asian idols. So, we can say that cultural dichotomy is one of the major themes of this poem. As the lotus is associated with divinity and is used in worship, it can be seen in the portraits of gods and goddesses. This adds a layer of spiritual depth to the theme, emphasizing close affinity with divinity. So, religious and divine connection is another major theme of this poem. Also, lotus is a transitional figure. The elements of both western and eastern beauty are united in it. The poem shortens cultural boundaries by presenting the lotus as a universal symbol of beauty. It suggests that true beauty can encompass and resonate with diverse cultural perspectives. Thus, we can say that universal beauty, harmony and unity are the themes of this poem. As lotus is the national flower of India and in the poem it is crowned as the queenliest flower, the poet glorifies India as supreme beauty. So nationalistic pride is another theme of this poem. So we have discussed all the themes of the poem. Now it's time to read the literary devices used in the poem. So let's move on. The first literary devices is personification. Love, flora, rose and lily are personified as living beings. So personification is one of the theme in the poem. We can find the use of simile in these lines. The rose can live a tower like the pale lily with her juno mane. Give me a flower, delicious as the rose, and stately as the lily in her pride. Entire poem can be seen as a metaphor, with flowers symbolizing different cultures. The next literary device is, is symbolism. The lily and rose symbolize western and eastern ideals of beauty. The lotus symbolizes the synthesis of these ideals and serves as a nationalistic symbol. Alliteration is also used in the poem. We can find in the below lines. Irony is also used in the poem. It is present in the conflict between the lily and the rose, which ultimately get resolved with the introduction of the lotus. We can see imagery in the below line. Give me a flower, delicious as the rose. This line creates a vivid image of a desirable flower. Enjambment is also used in the poem, which creates a smooth and continuous flow of ideas between the lines. We encountered with the use of repetition as well, specifically the repetition of the phrases Rose red and lily white in the lines 11 and 12 serves to emphasize the contrasting choices made by love. The poem alludes to both Greek and Roman mythologies with its reference to the goddess Psyche and Juno. So allusion is another theme of this poem. Let's discuss the summary of the poem. So in the poem, so in the poem, Turudat presents the idea that lotus is the most beautiful flower among all. For a long time, Lily and Rose had been fighting for the title Queen of Flowers. They engaged in a dispute, causing the other flowers to split in two factions, each siding with one of them. At this time, God of Love came to Goddess Flora asking for a flower which would be the unchallenged queen of all flowers. 
She asked for a flower which was stately as the lily and delicious as the rose. In response, Flora gave the lotus and resolved the long-standing quarrel between lily and rose. Here, lotus is symbolizing a harmonious fusion of Eastern and Western beauty ideals. So we have completed the poem. Now let's look into the questions asked in the previous year examination. I hope you enjoyed this beautiful poem written by Thorudat and it inspired you to embrace the beauty of language and continue your exploration of literature. Thank you for joining me on this channel. Keep reading, keep learning and keep growing. And yes, don't forget to show your support by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. Until the next time, happy reading, learning and growing.